Hello and welcome back to Desert DIY. If you are new here, my name is Corey. Today I am working on this very, very sad secretary piece. These pieces with the two glass display cabinets on either side and the desk in the middle are quite collectible, at least in my area. I picked it up for $40 and the people who had it were keeping it outdoors, which is probably why it is in the condition that it is in. Here in the desert, things that are left outside get destroyed and it still had its original key though so that is a big plus. The back side was falling off of it and the veneer finish was almost gone. It still had its maker's mark paper from the manufacturer which turns out that is not extremely valuable but that's okay. There was a lot that needed to be done to make this piece beautiful again and it was definitely a good candidate for paint so this piece is definitely going to be getting painted. The first thing I wanted to do was get that back reattached. A lot of times these back panels help with the structure so that the piece is not wobbly. So I wanted to start there first, plus it seemed like the easiest thing to start with. All I had to do was grab a few new nails and put them back in the holes where the original nails already were. Next I needed to address this lifting veneer here and I'm going to use some Starbond super glue to put this back down. You can also use wood glue with like a needle uh, applicator to stick it in there. But this uh, super glue already has that shape of applicator and it also has this spray that makes the glue dry really, really quickly. So you spray that in there first and then you can go back in with the super glue afterwards and it will dry extremely quickly. That way I don't need to put clamps on and wait forever for the wood glue to dry. I can just get this glued back together and start working on my project. I'm going to show you this clip in real time so you get an idea of how quickly the super glue dries with that spray accelerator. And I'll also link this product down below in case you guys want to check it out. Now it's time to remove the doors so that I can get prepped for paint. I definitely want to keep the hardware on the hinges in their current condition. I don't want to paint them in any way. They are very small and delicate and if I were to paint them it might mess up the function of them because it could get clogged up with paint. And I'm also going to be replacing all of the handles on here as well since a lot of the parts were missing and broken. I didn't want to have to do like a mix match of different handles. And I also check every little drawer and everything that's in there to make sure there's nothing nasty first of all. But also you never know if there's going to be like a million dollars hiding in one of the drawers in a piece that you pick up. <laughs> Time to put in some wood filler in all these holes. I don't know yet what handles I want to use on this. And I'm going to go up to the store to get some inspiration for what I want to do on this piece. I like to use the handles as inspiration sometimes, so I want to go pick those first before I make any decisions about the color or style that I'm going with. I do know that I want it to be French country style, 
and that's pretty much all I know at this point and I think that the handles will really inspire me Today was my lucky day. Hobby Lobby had all of their handles half off, which means they're going to be extremely affordable and cheaper than anywhere else you want to go. A lot of times Lowe's and Home Depot have really expensive knobs, and when Hobby Lobby's knobs are half off, they are a great deal. This piece is the one that I wanted to use, but when I looked inside the glass, it looked really funky where the screw was. And there was so many choices, I honestly didn't know what I wanted to go with. It took me a good 15-20 minutes to pick the knobs that I ended up using for this piece. I found so much inspiration here and I wanted to buy all the knobs, I wish I could have. And I also saw that there was a lot of other things on clearance like these beautiful hydrangea paintings. I couldn't believe the prices, they were 20 bucks and it was like had a really nice frame and everything. You couldn't beat that price anywhere else, even maybe at Goodwill would probably be <laughs> the same price or more. And they also had a bunch of other stuff on clearance and the kids found some things that they wanted, although this one was broken. But they had a lot of stuff in that French style that I wanted to do and for extremely cheap. Like I'm talking three to five dollars for a lot of these things. So I picked up quite a few things that I didn't expect to be picking up and I'll show you my haul later in the video. Outside my window Is everything pale and cold Can't seem to pick up my phone it's been ringing all day long Behind these clouds I know the sun will be But today is raining So be patient with me I'll be right Somehow I must be Somewhere the sky is blue Now that I'm back at home, it's time to sand down this piece to get it ready for paint. I started sanding this just to get it smooth to paint it, but then I realized that the mahogany on top was still in really good condition once I sanded the finish off, so I decided to keep that as wood. Mahogany veneer can be really deceptive. So right now you look at it and it looks like this beautiful light tan, like bleached wood look. But if I were to put any kind of sealer on that, it would immediately turn into a red color. So you have to make sure that you test it out. You can either use mineral spirits or water and see what it would look like when you put poly on it because that wet look is exactly what it would look like with poly. So with this and the look I'm going with, I wanted to tone down the red and I will use a wood stain for that. There's a lot of different wood stains that you could go with, but I chose to do flagstone because it is a bit of a beige wash, and that's the kind of tone that I wanted for this whole style that I'm going with. But look how instantly it gets a red or orange tone to it. Mahogany is very tricky that way, so I wanted to make sure I share that with you guys so that you guys don't make a mistake later on and put poly on there, and then it immediately pulls red, and you have to start over and re-sand off that poly again. So try and use a stain that it's going to mute out that red tone with like a beige or a whitewash. These are the handles that I decided to go with. I know that I want to do French country. These look like they could be really French country. I don't want that to be confused with farmhouse style and I'm not trying to do too shabby chic either. I want it to be a more fancy looking piece that would look really antique 
as in like authentically antique, not just like where you sand the edges and scuff it up and then make it look like it was antique. And my husband was taking care of putting the holes in for putting the handles on. This is because I am terrible about doing exact measurements and he's really good at doing exact measurements. So this is a time for him to shine with his skills. Here comes some more shellac to save the day. I'm going to use it to seal off all of that wood filler as well as seal all of the mahogany that is on this piece. Mahogany is notorious for bleeding through paint. You may think that you got away with it and you paint the whole thing and don't see any bleeding, but then when you go to put the sealer on, for some reason the sealer sucks out all of the bleeding areas and shows it after you've completed your project. So you think you're like, in the clear you did all your chalk paint but then you do the sealant and then boom you have a thousand spots that are bleeding and on the inside I'm going to do something really unique um, now that it's all covered in shellac and I don't have any worries of it bleeding I'm going to do gold inside the areas with the glass cabinets and I was kind of worried that it would look cheap and gaudy but it really turns out amazing you're gonna really like this Now I need to pick a paint color. I'm thinking I really want this light tan. And then I still have that olive. Well, you found you found some paint brushes? Yeah. Alright. Um I definitely don't want to do a darker green. For me? Thank you. Awesome. Okay, and then I have a black. Uh, a beautiful pearl pink, but no, yellow. This is another tan that I have, but I don't think that will go well with the gold. So I think I'm going to try this one. Yeah, try my day by Here's what it's looking like. Yeah, you can put it right there. I want to test out this paint color next to the gold before I make my final decision, and it turned out looking really beautiful, so it's time to go ahead and get this piece painted. As I was painting this foot, I realized that it was not attached very well, and I tried to hammer it back on, but that didn't really work, so later on, we're going to use a nail gun to reattach that. But for these glass doors, I do not waste any time or products on taping off glass. It is extremely easy to go back over with a flat razor and just scrape the paint off.
At this point in the day, it was time for my husband to tag in and for me to tag out. So he came in to fix this broken leg with our nail gun and I went inside to make dinner. And for dinner tonight, we are having Green Chef. So thank you to Green Chef for sponsoring this video. In my last video, I told you I'd have a really big announcement for this video, and that is that we are moving. We have packed all of our stuff, including most of our kitchen items. And so when we ordered this Green Chef set of dinners, it was like saving us from going out to eat fast food. Green Chef is a CCOF certified organic company, and it has options for every lifestyle like keto and paleo, vegan, vegetarian, fast and fit, Mediterranean, as well as gluten-free, which is what we need because my husband is gluten intolerant. I am also dairy intolerant, and so this was really nice to have something that was delicious to eat that wouldn't have things in there that would upset our stomachs. When you have to eat a special type of diet like we do, it can be really hard to figure out what to eat that tastes delicious, but Green Chef makes cooking easy with step-by-step -step instructions, chef tips, and photos to guide you as you follow the recipes, and also their ingredients come pre-measured, perfectly portioned, and mostly prepped. Our dinner tonight was some Mongolian barbecue beef, and it was a really hearty meal that made us all full, and it was really delicious. Use my code DESERTDIY130 to get $130 off plus free shipping on your first box. Go to greenchef.com for more details. The next day, I was able to finish painting this piece, and it was starting to really take shape. A little hack that I like to do when I'm using chalk paint is for the second coat, I will go ahead and put that polyurethane into the chalk paint. That way I don't have to do a second coat of chalk paint plus another coat of polyurethane after that. Another handle I got from Hobby Lobby was this one right here, and it wasn't the right color, but it was the right shape, so I just painted it white to match the other ones. I want to show you all the really cool stuff that I picked up when I went to Hobby Lobby and I also stopped at some thrift stores and picked up some cool things there too. The first thing I'll show you is this really cute picture that I got. It was only two dollars. Got that from a thrift store and I love this little, I believe that's called hobnail. This one is from Hobby Lobby. It was only $3.74. It has a really cute speckled finish on the bottom and then it's like a dark blue glaze. It has a hole, I'm guessing, for flowers, but that'd be kind of weird if your flowers stuck out one side, so I probably won't put flowers in there. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I love ginger jars, and I thought this was really unique. It's a brown that is so dark that it looks black, and I thought that was really cool. I've never seen one in this dark color. Next, I got these hooks from Hobby Lobby. They were of brown 650, and they have an antique finish on them to where it has a little bit of a light, like robin's egg blue color. And then the rest is a light rusty color. This cute little topiary ball I got from Hobby Lobby and it was $7, which is a little pricey for something this size. But I love the colors and it has a whitewash tone to it, which I thought went perfectly with this 
like French chateau look that I'm doing. This also goes really well with the rest of the stuff. I, <laughs> obviously there's a theme here. <laughs> this was from Hobby Lobby. It was 20 bucks, but half off it was only 10. And I thought this would look gorgeous inside one of the glass uh, shelves in there. These little sconces I thought were adorable and they were only $5.74 on clearance at Hobby Lobby. You really can't beat that price, especially for something brand new. I got another one of those sconces, but this one is white and then it still has that bluish green tone in here on the distressed parts and this one was also $5.49. Okay, now these right here are kind of a greenish beige color. It depends on what you pair it with, but man, they're so pretty, so neutral too. They go with so many different styles. Could go with the boho style or this French style. They're normally 30 bucks, but they were half off. So the set was 30 bucks. Each was 15. Another thrift find was this vase. It was only 60 cents and it has that same hobnail look to it, but I definitely want to paint this one. You probably saw this in the background, but this little ship, my son found it. It's a French ship, I looked it up. It's something called the Bellum, I believe is how you say it. But it's not worth much, I looked it up and these are selling for like 20 bucks or less. But somebody spent a long time building it. I bet you it was one of those sets that you can buy that's like not built. And this piece needs to be glued back on. Or we can just leave it. This set of wooden bowls was, I don't know, let's see, one, two, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. This was a dollar sixty for the whole set because each one was twenty cents. And they're all in pretty good condition. They have a maker's mark on them. One of them at least. It just has like a symbol and then says Japan. If you guys know a lot about these wooden bowls, please let me know. I wonder if I can pick it up on the camera. I don't know what maker that is. But anyways, I'm going to uh, oil these up and make them pretty again, probably. I don't know, I kind of like the raw look of it. But I thought this would look neat on a shelf in there too. Another thing I got from Hobby Lobby was this set of columns. And they were only $23 a piece. I love all the detail on it. And once I do like a glaze or antiquing wax on it, you'll really be able to see the details. But it's gorgeous. I want to make these be outdoor columns and put big cement pots on top and beautiful ferns or something. I got this from a thrift store for five dollars. It's not antique, it's actually from Ross and it was on clearance for ten dollars whenever somebody bought it. Probably because it has so much antiquing but I got it for five bucks I thought it would go really well with my new lovely style of the French country or French chateau and then I got this little hat boxes set they were a dollar a piece I have one inside too there's a green one inside but I, I thought these would be I thought the lids would be really cool if I mod podge on some of the really neat like twall tissue paper or something like that to give it that French look. Last but not least, I got this. It looks like a burl wood hand carved bowl. These are very pricey. I'll give you an idea of what these go for. But I got mine for $2.99. Gorgeous. So now I'm just gonna clean those things up and then I will stage them in here. I'm waiting. I ordered a tassel to go on my key here, so I'm waiting for that to get delivered. And once that does, then I can take the final picture of this and show you it all done. My pack of tassels has arrived and it's time to put it onto my key. I will link these in my Amazon store in my description box down below if you guys wanted to get some too. I know that you can buy skeleton keys as well, so if you have a piece that has a keyhole and you want to just add a little bit of flair there you can put a skeleton key in there even if it's not the right key just decoratively but look at how beautiful this piece turned out i love how this tan taupe color kind of blurred any imperfections that were on the piece and made it have a really high-end look for our new home i'm going with a french country theme and i'm going to be filling the house with tons of solid wood vintage and antique pieces and this is going to be one of them 
Thank you so much for watching, and if you liked what you saw, don't forget to hit subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye!